There we go. All right. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks heaps for joining. Um, so yeah, my name is Jack Taranto. I'm the front end lead at uh, Previous Next. And um, yeah, I'm coming to you live from my trendy um, loft office. And uh, yeah, this talk is um, about modern JavaScript development. So uh, yeah, this is going to be um, not a talk about um, doing decoupled front end sites or Drupal as an API. Um, this talk's just going to be about doing JavaScript within a Drupal site. So in your theme, in your front end inside your Drupal site. And there's not going to be much JavaScript code. It's mostly just going to be a focus on your build tools. So I'll get started with just a look at the current JavaScript technologies in Drupal. Um, so yeah, jQuery. I think most of us cut our teeth on jQuery. Um, in the early noughties, I think it was kind of a necessity. Um, it's been around since Drupal 5. Um, yeah, during that time, I guess browsers were pretty much all over the place. Um, you know, they all had different sets of functionality and jQuery, jQuery was really just there to kind of equalize all of that. Um, yeah, so it's still, it started in Drupal 5, but it's been around, um, like it's still there now in Drupal 9. Um, and jQuery UI basically powers you know, most of the interactivity in the admin theme. So yeah, um, besides jQuery, we've got Drupal.behaviors. So it's kind of the closest thing to a JavaScript framework um, that we've got. And, you know, it's called the JavaScript API um, in Drupal. And it's kind of telling, um, you know, that we're in a PHP ecosystem when, um, yeah, when, it's, you see that it's filed under the MISC directory. So yeah, so here's, this is my six step plan basically to modernize all this kind of stuff. And yeah, step one is just to stop using jQuery. It's a um, hundred kilobytes of stuff. We can kind of do um, really well with vanilla JavaScript. So yeah, you don't need to use it. And I think probably most of us have like said goodbye to it a long time ago. So that's why this is just step one. Um, yeah, step two, maybe slightly more complicated proposition. Um, yeah, should you stop using Drupal's JavaScript, only JavaScript framework? Like for me, it's an emphatic yes, definitely. Um, basically every recent project I've worked on, I haven't really seen much of a strong use case for it. So um, just dropped it entirely really. And I guess why? Well, yeah, take a look at this code um, boilerplate here. And this is kind of like what you need to do before you can actually write anything. So um, you find yourself like copy and pasting this um, constantly when you're writing these things. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I think, for JavaScript developers not um, familiar with Drupal. So um, like to, to go through it, you can see jQuery is baked in at the top. Um, there's this context argument, which is being passed through to the function there. Um, I think most people just go like, what is that? Um, and it's pretty confusing because it changes depending on when this is being called. Sometimes it's the whole document. Sometimes it's an individual HTML element. Um, but the kind of key is that like Drupal is running these behaviors over and over and over again um, throughout the page cycle. So it runs it when the page is loaded. It runs it, you know, when the page is updated and your code keeps getting called over and over again. You've got to use a plugin called jQuery once, which is kind of a bit of a blocker to getting jQuery out of core in Drupal 9. So yeah, you're using this jQuery plugin to stop your code getting run again and again and again. So like for me, it's kind of a bit of a no, like you can, you can't, you're kind of losing control of when your JavaScript is getting called um, and you're just handing it over to Drupal to do everything. So 
yeah, that's basically one of, like, that's the main reason I don't like to use it. But there is kind of a use case for it around, um, like, Ajax calls if you're using Drupal Ajax calls. So that's kind of where it comes in handy. But I'd probably say you shouldn't be using that stuff either, maybe, and doing things differently um, in general. So, yeah, I'm seeing less and less of a reason to use this um, in, a, in a modern site. So, yeah, step three, we're definitely onto the path of the light now. Um, so, yeah, just write your own JavaScript. Use vanilla JavaScript, use React, use Vue. Um, just use whatever you want, and you can kind of use all of the above um, if you have use cases for it, you know, on different pages um, inside different mini applications that you might have throughout your site. So. I guess the point is that Drupal shouldn't be defining, you know, your JavaScript technology inside your front end. Like the functionality itself should be defining that and, of course, your team skill base. So, yeah, Drupal comes with heaps of JavaScript de dependencies, just like the uh, JavaScript API. They're stored inside the MISC directory. Um, they're... Um, loaded inside cause libraries.yaml file. Um, don't use don't use these either. So they're basically there. I see them being there for kind of Drupal's admin site, basically. And I don't think these dependencies should ever cross over into your front end. Um, it's tempting to use them because they're there. They have libraries provided for them, but you shouldn't really be using you know these kind of libraries which are attached to a core version number you know you've got to upgrade core for any of these kind of dependencies to change so yeah it's much easier just to use npm install your own js dependencies um, you can really simplify your package.json file so it's just including you know these keys you really just need a dependencies key a dev dependencies key and uh, private equals true um, and this is really your package.json is really just a list of your dependencies it shouldn't be anything more unless you're kind of publishing it um, to an NPM repository. So, yeah, um, definitely use ES6 in general. Um, but, yeah, using ES6 imports is kind of where it's at. So um, nowadays, ES6 imports are natively supported in most browsers. So you can just write code that looks like this, and uh, browsers are going to you know, interpret that and they're just going to use that. They're going to look for those dependencies um, in those files and this is all kind of running natively in the browser, which is a huge, huge step forward. Um, for ages, imports syntax has basically just been an abstraction. We've had our build tools pull in the dependencies and just combine it all into one big bundle. Um, but, yeah, you don't need to do that anymore. These things are running natively in the browser and... Yeah, I mean, this kind of looks like a PHP use statement, you know. We're sort of at that level in JavaScript now. Um, so, yeah, you just need to change a couple of things in your build um, steps to stop producing these kind of big mega bundles. Um, so you need to enable code splitting um, in Rollup or Webpack also does code splitting too. So, yeah, I'm using or we're using Rollup um, for our JavaScript builds. Um, I have used Webpack as well, so um, kind of settled on Rollup as a tool mostly just because it's kind of, it's. I, I just find it way cleaner to configure. Um, it's also kind of, it's just as configurable as Webpack, but it just has a cleaner um, interface, I think, and it produces cleaner output in Terminal and in CI as well, so it's a little bit prettier. Um, and it's definitely, I think it's definitely got better documentation as well. Um, so, yeah, this is a little example from a rollup.config.js um, file for code splitting builds. So, um, we've gone with an entry.js naming convention. So, um, we're using the globby. Uh, module there so it takes these three globs and it's looking for entry points inside either a profile or a module or a theme so you can write your javascript um, you know in any of those three places and 
yeah, the Globby module um, takes those globs and it just outputs a full list of paths to all your entry points. So if you think that the entry point is kind of like your, your your main JavaScript file, and that's the file that you're going to load into Drupal. So yeah, you pass that array through to, as an input, and then um, that output directory um, at the bottom there, that's going to spit out all these entry points um, into your Drupal libraries directory. So that way, all of your JavaScript gets um, exported into one place, which is kind of nice. You don't need to export it out into each theme or into each module. You can just put it all in the libraries directory. And yeah, you don't include that um, when you're committing. And yeah, that all kind of gets built on CI. So yeah, behind the scenes roll up is running its code splitting build. And it's going to output a chunks directory as well into that same place. And the chunks are where all the common exports um, get outputted to, and it's going to optimize that. It's going to put them all in um, you know, common files as it, as it needs to, and it does all that without um, you know, any user input. So yeah, we're not going to say goodbye to all of Drupal's dependency management just yet. Um, Drupal's library system is really good, and it does a great job of getting JavaScript and CSS under the page, so use it. Um, you know, you probably won't use its built-in dependency management. Um, you're doing all that in the JavaScript file itself, so you won't need to kind of include other libraries. Um, you'll just be using it to define libraries, really. So, yeah, a module, you can define module script tags like this. Um, so, yeah, I'm just referencing the file that has been built by Rollup inside the libraries directory. And yeah, you just need to add that attributes type module um, config at the end, and that's going to output a module script tag. So yeah, code splitting has got um, two major benefits that I see. I think the, imp the obvious one is just imp import syntax being great. It's quick, it's easy. Um, yeah, you can pull down a whole dependency via NPM and you know, start using that with literally one line of code. So it's just, yeah, it's really transforming things, I think. Um, and yeah, the other one is just being JavaScript file sizes being optimized out of the box. So yeah, you don't have to worry about um, including dependencies or duplicating dependencies throughout your code base. Um, you don't have to worry about committing certain dependencies or where they live, um, you know. Yeah, so yeah, as far as reasons for ditching jQuery and Drupal.behaviors, well, besides jQuery's file size, well, jQuery's file size being 100 kilobytes, that, that whole file size is basically there um, to make it easier for us to write code. So it's sort of like, yeah, it's a step, you know. I, I, think, as, I think as JavaScript developers, we, we need to learn vanilla JavaScript um, you know, and understand those quirks basically, and without having jQuery there to do that for us, um, you know, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't. We should be doing that ourselves rather than pushing that on people's browsers in the form of a hundred kilobyte library. So, yeah, Drupal behaviors. I think besides the reasons I mentioned earlier, um, it's not. You know, it's kind of confusing, and it's not really like any modern JavaScript framework. It's a pure total Drupalism. And um, yeah, I think now we, we don't need Drupalisms. We don't need any more Drupalisms in our in our front end, basically. I think we've got the theming system and that's basically enough. We can deal with that and we can write JavaScript our own way. So yeah, Internet Explorer 11 is obviously a daily worry for many of us, I think. Um, so yeah, it's basically evergreen. There was an announcement last year, uh, in August this year, about um, Microsoft dropping support for it in 2021. Um, but yeah, it kind of caught the headlines, but they're actually just dro dropping support for it in their own 360 services. Um, they're actually going to continue security updates. They're going to continue patching it um, forever, I think. So we basically, it kind of remains to be seen how long we're going to be dealing with Internet Explorer. 
but of course it doesn't support ES6 modules at all. So we've got a workaround for that. Um, that's what this looks like. So this is our rollup config and yeah, we're actually passing, um, we're exporting a, a config array here. So we can have a separate build step for our no module builds. So the no module builds are the i11 builds and also any of the other browsers which don't um, support modules, um, which is some of the older you know, browsers that might be kicking around. So yeah, basically here, we're just looping over the entry points and we're adding a separate build step for each, um, you know, for each uh, no module file. And because we're not passing an array through as an input, it's gonna output, you know, a separate file for each thing. So um, you can just update your library's definition with that no module um, definition at the top there. So it'll add a regular um, script tag with no module equals true, um, which most browsers will just skip over. Whereas the module script tag, um, yeah, that's going to get ignored um, by IE11, which is great. So to do this, um, the easiest way is using Babel's environment presets. So this allows you to have two separate kind of Babel settings for your module builds and your no module builds. Um, to do to use environment presets, you just need to pass through this end name um, config into your plugin config inside your rollup.config. Um, so that's what that looks like, just a little excerpt of that. And then, yeah, here, um, so yeah, this is the actual babel.config.js file. Um, you can see we've got env presets there for module and no module. And yeah, we're just using the standard preset env uh, module and yeah, we're passing through targets there. The ES6 modules equals true is something that that um, preset env supports. So that's gonna automatically target any browser that supports modules. Um, and then I'm specifically targeting IE11 for the no module build there, IE11 is a suitably low baseline for any of the other kind of transpiling that needs to go on for ES6 codes. So yeah, that um, tends to work pretty well. Um, you can also use core JS as well. So um, that's just gonna automatically polyfill um, everything for you basically. I think I'm almost out of time, but um, yeah, that's kind of all I had. So. I'll see if I can jump to some questions before it cuts me off. Got 34 seconds, it's kicking down. Um, yeah, that question from Max, I think that's answered. I think, yeah, is there anything else? Cool. All right. Well, thanks heaps, guys. Thanks for um, hanging in there.